according to St. Luke. Our gracious Heavenly Father, why don't you stand for a moment? For Luke, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, they were ended, he afterward hungered. Verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We want to talk to you tonight about being led by the Spirit. Now, may I announce this, an announcement. Most people are only willing to go so far. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. And to add to that, most people are just going so far. If I didn't realize this, I would despair when I have to preach certain things like this tonight. You know why? Because I have little hope of the average individual applying themselves thereunto. Isn't that something? Well, Brother Ham, that's a defeatist attitude. No, that's a realistic attitude. Being led of the Spirit. Now, will you follow me tonight? Will you pray with me? See, I'm going to tell you something. In this last day, the Holy Ghost is trying to cram. See, most people are so far behind that he's giving us all of these extra assignments hoping that we can come up to a point of acceptability before Jesus comes, because most people aren't. When he comes back, he's only coming out the glorious church, and it takes these things to make it glorious. Those that have an ear to hear, hear tonight, please. Now you pray. Now, the Bible said Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Pray with me for a little while. Returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We're not really prepared to be spiritually led until we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you praying with me? Please pray with me. I said you are not in a position to be led of God until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on. Give me Psalm chapter 27, verse 11, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Psalm 27, verse 11. 11. Read. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way, O Lord. And lead me in a plain path. Now you listen. The leadership of the Holy Ghost is not as complicated as the world, yea, the church world, would make it seem to be. David said, lead me in a plain path. And then I'm going to show you something. Many people have been led in paths just as clear as that light is shining. But at the time they received their guidance, they were not prepared to execute. When God made that plain path, they were not prepared to Walk therein. Where are they now? In confusion? 
You, will you pray with me? The church, for the most part, is just one great big glob of confusion. One great big mass of spiritual confusion. Why? Because Because when God, I'll speak into it. This one is battery. Because when God made it clear the path that you should travel, it was more than you were willing to submit to at that time. It was more than you could submit to at that time. Now you found me here. God knew when to make this great mandate of Jesus. After he came out of Jordan, after the Holy Ghost descended upon him, then the Lord said, I am able now to lead him any way that I choose. I don't have to be selective about the way that I lead him. Why? Because he's no longer in the flesh. He will not regard the flesh. But I'm going to show you something. See, dear one, when God tried to lead people, I don't care if it's in the best interest of their soul. If they can't see their way through to the end, they'll back up and wait until they can, or at least they think they can. And you know what happens? You get what you call confusion of faces uh, give me Mark chapter 1 quickly verse 11 read and there came a voice from heaven saying there came a voice from heaven saying thou art my beloved son thou art my beloved son in whom I am in well whom pleased. I am well pleased come on and immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness Listen, the spirit of God being led of the spirit different terminology but meaning the same thing being driven of the spirit come on and immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness come on and he was there in the wilderness 40 days. He was there in the wilderness 40 days. Tempted of Satan. Tempted of Satan. And was with the wild beasts. Wild beasts. And the angels ministered the unto him. The most unpleasant situation imaginable. Hungry. Deprived. Exposed. And with wild beasts. The spirit leading. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not in a position to be led of the Spirit. Why? Most people will only succumb to that which is pleasant. And that is not the way God can lead you now. Why? Because He has a purpose. Why? Why? Jesus was just fixing to embark upon His ministry. And God wanted him to stay there until every vestige, every desire of the flesh was under perfect subjection. Lord have mercy. I can imagine after a couple of days when those gas pains began to start and those intestines began to growl. Jesus might say, all right, Lord, when can I go? Just stay on there, I'll let you know. After five days, I'm losing weight. Can I go now? I'm not ready yet. You know, you got human flesh, and I still see something in it. Ten days, feverish, breath foul, body odor. What about now, Lord? I'm not ready for you. You got too much. You got the cross before you. And the cross is more than a notion. You got to go through that cross in the flesh. You're not going through it as God. You're going through it as man. You got the mean. You got the very devil himself to look in the face. 
You got all them spirits clamoring for your very blood. You recant. Fifteen days. I can hardly move my knees and begin to wobble. I can't even get about hardly. I can't even protect myself from the wild beast. I'm not ready yet. You have a mission. I cannot. You know, you wonder if the average person is not too far behind the ketchup. Being led in the most despicable manner. The thing that would be most repulsive to the flesh, to lead you like that. That's not the way people are looking to be led. That's not what people are, looking, are seeking when they say, lead me, Lord. That's not what they are expecting when they say, show me, Lord. That's why God don't show you. Let me show you something. The Holy Ghost is wiser than we. Do you know why you have so much difficulty? I'm going to show you exactly why so you don't have to wonder anymore. You know why it's so difficult for you to know exactly what God's saying? God knows that this ain't what you want. It ain't going to waste my time telling you because that's not what you want. I know what he looked down in your heart. He said, I know what you're looking for, and it's not this. You're not looking at anything like this. Come on. You want to pray and ask somebody to send you something. You're not letting anybody take you other way. This, this is not what you're looking for, so ain't going to send me food with you. Now you, can, you, you. You can take it or leave it. He said, you are not looking for this kind of guidance. You don't, you, this is not what you want, and I know it's not what you want. Now you can act all spiritual and try to get as spiritual you want to along certain lines, but this is not what you were looking for. You're not ready for this. Now you get ready, and I'll show you, and I'll lead you. If, now, if you were prepared for it and I wouldn't lead you, then I wouldn't be just. But you don't want it. This is not what you want. So there's no sense to come out and let's show me because this is not what you want. You're looking for something else. You were asking for a certain thing. This is not what you want. In Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs 3, Holy Ghost help us. See, dear, I'm going to show you something, and I told you. Now, this is what the time, this is the kind of time we've got to redeem. If you had kept abreast with the Holy Ghost ever since you got saved, this is where you'd be now. What? If every time God led you, you'd have kept up with it, that's where you'd be just waiting for the next command. But now you don't know which command to look for. Got too far behind. Too many commands stacked up on you. Why? God said willingness, and you said dead. God said fast, you said eat. Come on. Come on. Dear one, you, will, you, will you think with me? Just, if you just think with me and deal with yourself tonight, that'll be sufficient for me. If you'll do that, you promise me you'll do that. Now I'm going to show you something. There, if you have plans... Anything, if anything that's really significant or any kind of schedule, most of you likely made it because you thought that was best. You follow me? Whatever is on your agenda right now, I'll almost guarantee you the average individual decided that because they decided, well, I got enough money to do it. I got a vacation check coming up or I got a Christmas check coming up or whatever and I've saved and decided enough money, so I'll do it. I can afford to do it. That's why most people do things because they can afford it. Not because they lay it. Do you follow me? Because I have the means whereby I can do it. Come on. Not because they prayed it through. But they decided, well, this is best. Uh, all the rest of the saints are doing it.
Give me Romans chapter 8. Lord God, may we run with full speed. Verse 26, please, brother. I'm a, I wanted you to see how significant this is, if I can tonight. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Now, will you follow me, please? The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Do, let me show you something. They want, will you please open your ears tonight? Please fight yourself tonight and try to get this. They want, can you understand? We don't even know what to do. We don't even know what to pray for. Even those things that are essential to us, we don't know how to ask for it. We don't know what to ask for. We don't know how to make an impression upon God. You understand? Since you don't know the future, you don't know what would be best for you in the future. You don't know what tomorrow holds. How do you know what to ask for? You don't know what the situation will be like. The most you can do is speculate. Why? Because tomorrow is yet future. Tomorrow is not yet come. Tomorrow has to yet be formulated. You understand? The deeds of tomorrow are planned in many instances, but perhaps most of them will be rearranged. You don't know how people are going to be thinking that you'll have to do with tomorrow. You don't know how the circumstances will shift. Therefore, you don't know what to ask for. Right. Come on. Yeah. The thing that you think might be in your best interest might be to your eternal detriment. Yeah. Right. The thing that you are so upset about, the thing that you are seeking with such honor and diligence might be your undoing. So you don't know what to pray for as you ought. This is what I'm trying to show you. Dear one. Now, if you cannot be led by the Spirit in your prayer, you are just out there on the mercy of God. And the mercy of God does not cover everything. Read, son. I'll show you something here. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our the infirmities. The Spirit also helpeth my our infirmities. How many times, even with the Spirit, feel apostles have made grand and consequential blunders had not they been led by the Spirit by doing things that seemed well. Then we believe we'll preach the gospel here and the Bible says they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost. They said we'll go, home, go here but the Holy Ghost constrained them again. As far as they were concerned there were people everywhere. They could have done good anywhere they went. They could have preached gospel in any of those cities. But the Holy Ghost said, no, nope, I don't want you there. Well, why Holy Ghost? Those people need salvation like the other people. That would be a good reason, wouldn't it? Sure. But the Holy Ghost knew the situation. So there's no need to pray, bless me down in Macedonia, because the Holy Ghost said, don't go down there. So there's no need to pray that. There's no need, Lord, bless me when I go so and so. Well, the Holy Ghost might not be leading you there. So you're just there. This is a tremendous thing. Do you hear me? I'm going to tell you something. The devil has tricked many of us and many of us are going to suffer the consequences of being led by the wrong spirit. I don't care how good you think you are. You, you can do a little good anywhere you go to some degree. But I guarantee you, you're going to come out on the losing side if you're not led by the Holy Ghost. Now you might try to justify it because or maybe somebody said they got some help from what you said or somebody said maybe got saved. You can't justify it by that means. God. I'm going to tell you dear one, but when you're in the flesh you'll go where the flesh is pleased you'll go where there's an outlet for the flesh a relaxation to the mind a social benefit for your uh, very spirit then you find yourself struggling then you find yourself heavy on your way back home then you find yourself sitting up all night and say, I shouldn't have done it. Say, God have mercy. The flesh many times and reason is crying so loud that it drowns out the very voice of the Holy Ghost. Oh, 
blessed God forevermore. The Bible says what the Spirit does, what, son? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Helpeth our weaknesses. For oh. we know not what we should pray for. We, as we know are. not what we should. I don't care who you are, how much you can holler, and how well you can put your word together. You might be able to speak with rapidity of speech. You might be able to amalgamate your words and put them together in a most meaningful fashion. But you don't know what to pray for as you all. I don't care how well you can pray and how uh, you can elevate your voice and, uh, and ascend and descend at, at proper junctures. But you don't know what to pray for as you all. Regardless of what you say, I don't care how long you pray. Your eyes might be red when you're finished, but you don't know how to pray as you all. You don't know. If the Spirit of God is not capable of leading you in prayer, if you're doing it just because you have the means whereby to do it, then what I guarantee you tonight, most people who are, whose, whose lives, whose economical situation, whose situation in general is in a jumble tonight, is because of a lack of Holy Ghost leadership. You might think it's nothing, but the very thing you think is nothing might have weighed on your spirit and call you to have to do a lot of struggling you would not have to have done otherwise. Many people are struggling tonight who would not have to struggle if they're led by the Holy Ghost. You might somehow make it, but you're going to lose some time at the best. You're going to end up being behind at your best. I'll guarantee you that. And I'm going to tell you something, dear one. Whenever there's a decision to be made, the enemy always rushes in. With a real, loud, hasty decision and answer. And he does everything that he can to magnify it. And show you every reason why you just can't refrain from doing it that way. And he makes it so reasonable in most instances. And then he shows you the glamour and everything that goes with it. And usually you'll walk off with it. The Spirit does what, son? The Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. Can I show you something tonight? Do one. Your fleshy mind asks for something to your detriment and God will give it to you? Sure you've done it. You have to be in a position to even pray about something. Don't you fool around and, 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 and uh, bring an affront to the call of God by jumping down on your knees with your mind already made up. Begging God for something in the flesh and let God give it to you let it run out your nostrils. D-one, if you got some young people around here, you got somebody you know, you better try to teach them. If you can know somebody in the flesh about to run into a stone wall, you better try to beg. You better do all you can to plead with them. Run around talking about going all the country, talking about God answered your prayer and all that kind of stuff. Look what God did for me. Maybe tomorrow, look what God did. Maybe just accept the first thing came out tomorrow. Look what God did. Oh, God did this. God did the other. But the one before the thing goes down, you'll find out who really did it. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, I'm going to show you something. If I am not in a position to accept what God says, I'm learning. I'm going to leave it alone. Yes, I will too. By the living grace, I leave it alone. If I, if I know I'm not ready to take what God says, just don't mess with it. Just go and do what I want to do. And maybe I might escape it. Maybe God won't just give it to me. If you're not ready for whatever answer God gives you, leave it alone. Do you hear me? Can you accept that tonight? Don't pray about it. Don't mess with it. Just go and do what you want to do. Satisfy your flesh. Amen. Well, I need such a second. I'm going to go and ask God for it. Many people are not in a position to accept or no answer, especially if they have the wherewithal to do it. And they're not going to accept it. 
The only know some people know is a closed door. And God is not going to always slam the door. So don't try to always use that as a criteria. Well, I believe I've got God opening the door. Well, my door always open for me, more or less. If you got a few means, if you got a little wherewithal, you can do what you want to do. A few dollars at, a, at an opportune moment is not always an indication of God's approval or his leadership. But God opened the door. God just opening doors. You can run in and get crucified. You better get some better leadership than an open door. You better get some better guidance than an open door. Do you hear what I'm saying? Many of those doors just open. You better find out who opened in the first place. True. And that's all I too many people talking about. Yeah, well, God provided, God made a way. Well, they, what about those people who can always do it? If some people got a few dollars, they can always go. They can always do it. They can always uh, do what they want to do. What about those? The door is always open in that respect. Some of them don't have no response, but just go, they can do like that. What about them? Is, the door always, is that an open door? Is that, 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 that an indication? Give me Proverbs chapter 3. That's why the Bible says how hardly it is for a rich man to enter heaven. Why? Because he can't be led of the spirit. He's going to be led by his mind. He got, to, he, got the, he got the wherewithal. He got the means. It's not that it, the riches alone will condemn him, but he got the means. You understand? He got the wherewithal. That's why I try to tell you, dear one, let me, you, can, you can take this or leave it. But those of us who have means and little responsibility, you're in a dangerous spot. You follow? You, you can take it or leave it. Then you better pray. You better pray hard. See, this is what they're going to get some of you if you ain't careful. The means and few responsibilities. That means you can do almost what you want to do. No children to tie you down. No husband to tie you down. And, f- and a, month, a month or so free every year. And the means we're about to do it. You better be careful. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. If you aren't careful. This is a tremendous thing. Now I'm going to tell you, they want it's hard to have all those means and all those uh, open doors and not do just what your mind says do. Your mind. Read. Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine Trust heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy Don't own Don't lean to your own understanding, the Bible says. Come on. In all thy ways, acknowledge now, him. Now, to acknowledge him don't mean to say, Lord, what should I do? That's not an acknowledgement. See, some people, I mean, they know what to do superficially. Uh, they, everything they do, they say, Lord, what should I do? Lord, lead me. That's not an acknowledgement. Do you know what an acknowledgement is? When you go before God seeking his will. I don't mean asking it, but seeking it. Actually, I'm acknowledging you, Lord. Now, you tell me what to do. And I'm waiting for that. I don't have no answer. I don't have no arranged answer. I don't have no pre-arranged decision. I don't have that. I'm acknowledging you all together. Most people just make a reasonable and an educated deduction. You know what I mean? Well, it would be, I believe God could get glory. I believe it would be better if I did it. And that's what they, that's what they use, that little belief and that notion. That's, that's the extent of their guidance. Well, yeah, I believe God could be a blessing. I believe I could do some good. Well, maybe you could. That's not the question. But where do you get your direction from? Your notion, your mind, your better judgment? What did the word of God say? Come on. In all the all your ways, all your ways, significant or insignificant, Amen. all your ways, the by, Lord have mercy. I, are you in position to acknowledge Him? Are you in position to receive a no? Are you in position to make a sacrificial decision? That's the question. That's the question. Would you renege on the Holy Ghost if he would lead you in a certain path? I don't care how plain it is. Would you back up if the end you cannot see? 
Well, when you might you might gloss over and just go on to have and we'll have church again Tuesday night of the month, uh, whenever, if you want to. But the Mr. Day one, you can have Tuesday night and every other night. That's what I'm trying to tell you about. There's no need to try to rush and get to Tuesday night service and missing this. And I think most many of us are going to stop cooling our tracks about right here. The Bible said in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Lord, would it be in the best interest of my soul and all involved if I should do this? Would it enhance my relationship with you? Would it really, Lord? I need direction. And I guarantee you, if you go there with an open heart and not deceiving yourself and not just saying, I'm open, I don't mean that. I'm talking about in reality. I guarantee you, you will get some specific direction from God. I guarantee you. God could not withhold helpful information from you and allow you to make a blunder and then hold you responsible for making it. If you would get in a position where you are actually willing and ready to receive the guidance of the Holy Ghost and God would lead you astray or refuse to give you the guidance that you're seeking, then he'd be responsible for your blunder. He would be responsible for the mess that you get in. But he would have to go contrary to his word to do it. He said, if in all of your ways you would acknowledge him, he will direct your path. And as you, as you are a foot tall, thank God if you acknowledge God right, Lord, he, I am neutral before you. I don't make me no difference. Even though, Lord, my cup be bitter, I'll drink it. It might sever every imaginable hard time. My plans and my hopes might seem blighted, but Lord, I am ready for it. All that I want is a direction. Just make it plain to me. And you know my heart. You know I mean it. It might be sacrificial. It might bring me low. You know I mean it, Lord. Now I want the answer. My personal desires have been relegated to the background. My personal preferences are buried. Everything that would obscure a clear answer has been swept away. So now just give it to me, Lord. Lord, give it to me. And I guarantee you, you won't have to walk around 10 years trying to wonder whether you're right or whether you're wrong. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. But let me tell you, dear one, the average person just starts whining and pining and begging and pleading before they have any notion of what God would have. That shows something. You know what that shows? That shows a lack of consecration. If there's anything involved in this situation that's going contrary to the grain, if there's any suffering involved, if there's any adversity involved, they immediately begin to cry for relief. Not for direction. Relief at any cost is most people's motto. That's why their experience is so involved, difficult. Bible says if in all of your ways you would acknowledge him, acknowledge him. I don't mean just go through some little routine prayer, but actually acknowledge him. He will direct your path and he'll do it too that's an indictive yeah, see, he'll do it it's true. Yeah. But if you got your own little schedule made he, would, he very likely will not interrupt it if you got your own little schedule made out well I'm going to do this this year and this in the six months I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this tomorrow and do this next day well you'll very likely end up doing it all right Give me Numbers, chapter 9, verse 17. We'll read probably one scripture after that. 
And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place they journeyed when the cloud was taken up. Come on. And in the place where the cloud abode, uh -huh. there the children of Israel pitched their Where the cloud abode, where the cloud stayed, they pitched their tent right there. Come on. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle. Will you please? Will you please? Can I get your attention? Can I get everybody's undivided attention as we climax this message? Can I please? Are you following this? May God help us. Maybe you've decided you're so far from it. I may well just forget it because I'm not going to do it anyway. But please, if you can, will you come, son? Will you read? As long as the cloud as abode, long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle upon the tabernacle they rested in their tent they rested in their tent read and when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle I don't care if it stayed long come on then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord they didn't go people now let me see what's happening on the outside and journeyed not they didn't move. They didn't, they did not go on the weekend, everything's all right. We know the way, the, the road looked clear ahead. The Bible says they journeyed not. Read. And so it was. So it was. When the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle. When the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle. According to the commandment of the Lord. According to the commandment of the Lord. They abode in their tent. They abode right there in their tent. Come on. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. Come on. And so it was. So it was. When the cloud abode from even until the morning. Come on. And that the cloud was taken up in the morning. Come on. Then they journeyed. Come on. Whether it was by day or by night. Day or by night. That the cloud was taken up. Yes. They journeyed. It didn't make any difference. Daytime or nighttime. It didn't matter. If the cloud moved, they moved. Read. Or whether it were two days, two or days, a month, month, or a year. Year don't make me no different. Praise our God. We're resigned to the Holy Ghost. We're not gonna get ahead of Him. I don't know if it's in a two days, a month, or ten months, or ten years. I don't care. If you never move out right here. God. Say what you want to say. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something about this consecration thing. You can say what you want to say. You can pray. The, you, you can leave all these. You can talk, this consecration thing is a tremendous thing. When you can resign to the Lord, if you stay at two days, I'll go two days. If you stay a month, I'll stay. If you stay a year, if you stay 90 years, I'll be right here. I'll, 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 I'll dry up right here. But you know what? The average person that put that kind of consecration out of reach. And they don't even worry about it. They don't even try to attain to that. They, they, they say, far from me. I mean, I just do what I know is best. And even despite... But this was not just an instance because it was carried right over into the New Testament. It was carried right over. Paul went bound in the Spirit. The Spirit forbade him. It was a cloud back there, and it was a Spirit in the New Testament. And that's the same Spirit you have, or you should have. Turn to John 16, 13 quickly to prove it. Hurry up. Please have a go. Let's move on. St. John 16, 13. Read. How be it? How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come. When he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. There we are. There we are. He'll guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. He shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. The Bible says he'll guide you into all truth. Young man here this morning said he was looking uh, for truth. He was seeking truth. Well, it will be determined in the days to come whether he actually was. The you can say what you want to say. He might be looking for something to fit his fancy. See what I mean? 
But do you want to let me show you something? You don't have to argue. That's why you don't find me, find me hold nobody here. You know why? Because I know this. If a person got truth in them, they know truth when they hear it. And you can't, and you can't, you can't blast them away from it. That's right. I know what I'm talking about. Why? Because the spirit of truth agrees with the right spirit. That's right. And at any price, they'll, they'll hang with it. Amen. Praise this is a tremendous God. thing. I know that. That's right. At any price. Any sacrifice. That's right. Whatever you well, want. you think you got the only truth? I don't even have to talk about that. I don't even, I don't even care to entertain you. That's right. Praise you follow God. me? I don't even care to go into that. You think ain't no truth? No weapon. One for the West South Street. I don't even care to go into that. I don't have to. That's right. If you know where some more is, help yourself. We're not, we're, not, we're not supposed to be the only the truth on earth. If you, know where, if you know where some truth is, but I tell you what, anything less than truth, you'll be lost. Right. You'll be less than what God would have you be, and if you've got a real right spirit, you recognize that. Amen. What'd you say, son? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come? Come on. He will guide you into all truth. Oh, he'll guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself. He's not going to speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. All right. In and Mark, he will show Mark you Mark chapter 14, verse 57. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I'll destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I'll build another. Made without hands. But neither so did their witnesses agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answer thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses witness against thee? He held his peace and answered nothing. Why? The Holy Ghost didn't give him nothing to say. The Holy Ghost didn't give him a defense. And if God help us the night, my God help us the night. When people are, uh, you say them, I didn't say it. I didn't prove I didn't. More people are going to lose their soul by answering again. Do you, want, do you know that everybody will spontaneously answer again in their own defense? I mean, if you got them off a little bit, if you're going to accuse them, if they think they're going to be the underdog, they'll argue you down and you can't stop them. No Holy Ghost prompting. And I know the Holy Ghost in nine instances out of ten will tell you to hold your peace because you're not going to accomplish anything. That's right. And even if you won the argument, you wouldn't be any better. That's right. False prophets, false witnesses, stacked up against him. Brother Pastor, they accuse me. If you couldn't argue them, they're going to come tell me about it. The word of God says, and uh, the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answer thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses, these witnesses against thee? But he held his peace. Go into God forevermore. Had enough Holy Ghost not to let the devil push him off into a lot of uh, tongue rattling. You watch and see, they won. A lot of you young people. Amen. A lot of you young. If somebody accuse you wrong or say you didn't do it. I thought I told you to sweep this floor. I swept it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Go and throw some of this one. Okay, sweep it again. Huh? Oh, oh this will be. Answering again. Brother, pray with me. Will you do that, son? People are not going to get this, son. If people think you got them just a little bit wrong, they will argue until they fall. Or every person who claims to be even sanctified in against this. Yeah. If they think you answer, you, I told you this answering again going to cause you to lose your soul if you're uncareful. I think they can look at people do it, not even thinking, don't even know what they're doing. Don't even realize they're doing it. But they want Jesus was led of the Spirit. I don't care if you accused them wrong, if you had him falsely accused, it didn't matter with him. He knew that if you accused him wrong, if he wasn't wrong, that wouldn't make him wrong. He had sense enough to know that. And if the Holy Ghost didn't give him, he knew that all these stiff-necked people, all these old hard and hard and calloused individuals, if he would answer them, they wouldn't take it anyway. Then all that purpose was already set. So why even bother to answer? If you get, let the Holy Ghost lead you, many times you wouldn't even bother to answer. Just let them go on talk. Let people talk and say you didn't do it when you know you did. That's all right. That's all right. 
Let them pile mal uh, addictions up on Let them say what they want to say. And e even though they might be wrong, you don't have to try to lose your soul trying to prove no point. Right. What does the Spirit give you an answer? Many times somebody else will jump up and try to defend you. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I know I didn't do it. Don't worry about it. Right. Many times some other people see you falsely accused and try to defend you. Don't know. That's a, don't, don't worry about it. Let, let it go. No, but don't bother. Don't bother. Everything's all right. That's true. Being led of the Spirit. Being led of the Spirit. In the wilderness. Wild beasts. Oh, I have mercy. Oh, I have mercy. They want, I'm afraid, many of us are being led into death traps because we don't have the wherewithal, don't have the humility, don't have the submission to be led of the Spirit of God, and especially in our conversation. They want, I'm going to tell you something, you've got to make some great big decisions in this life, and I know it. I can remember when my daughter was finished couple of years of college and picking the transfer to another plans all made and I didn't see it I didn't I didn't I, I thought the enemy trying to get off base here trying to make some unnecessary preparation for life when this wasn't necessary ain't gonna mess around now and get out around the influence of the gospel just for a moment and God began to deal with her I said, look honey we just forget prestige and honor now and preparation you've the preparation you made is sufficient that that's, that's that will suffice your life. Don't don't go no further. No. I don't care about no future and about no, what, two or three degrees. I don't care about no mess like that. You've done sufficient to get you over in life, and that's enough. Now go on for another reason. Get in the flesh and try to get it on and press these and put a little piece of paper on the wall about a degree, and then you just buy it and you lose your soul. I don't care how honorable it seems. This is a tremendous thing. I'm telling you, this is a tremendous thing. Now you can say what you want to say, and we ought to know. Many of us ought to know enough about ourselves to know how we've been led. See, if you don't know yourself, you're in a bad situation. Many of us ought to know how we're struggling, trying to know the will of God, and how we just do things because we can do it. We ought to realize that tonight. We ought to be you better sit tonight. And if you don't, it's to your eternal detriment. If you need help, if you want to get lined up with the Holy Ghost, you can. Shall we stand? Dear one, you're not going to get led if you're not prepared to be led. Jesus could not have received such a stringent command unless he had been prepared as he was. It was too much for the flesh to accept that kind of command. And then after the initial uh, persuasion, you've got to be in a position to be constantly led. On from there. See, just because God leads you initially, see, there are several decisions you've had to make while you're in the midst of being led. He leads you to one station, but you've got to go from there. Lord, have mercy. Dear one, do you know, do you know your position tonight? Do you know how you're being led tonight? Is it still clear to you? Or are you wondering about something that you one time saw? What is your situation? What is your plight? And they want one of the most difficult things to do is to try to make a decision after you've lost the leading. See, when God leads you, he gives you grace to go along with it. But if you mess around and then and lose that, then you just have to make it on your own and you've got a problem. Are you actually being led or are you doing it because you can do it? Are you doing it because you have the wherewithal? Are you doing it because you have an opportunity to do it? I tell you what, it might not mean nothing to you now, but you let the enemy push you off into a bad decision. Not only mean marriage, either, I mean many in any area. I tell you what, you, you wish you had then. There are a lot of decisions you can make in life, they want. I tell you what, that you wish you had waited on the Holy Ghost. A bunch of them. 
Same thing that seemed to mean absolutely nothing. You find that you've just gotten unnecessarily involved. You find that you just did something and now you've got to pay for it. You've got to suffer it out. Lead me. Guide me. Along the way For if you lead me I cannot stray Lord, let me walk the day They want, when you see people just wandering hither, thither, and yon. When you see people making one blunder on top of another blunder. They want, can you see how serious? Can you see the gravity of being properly led? When you see people crossing the Holy Ghost, getting in His way, reaping all kinds of things that they would not have to have otherwise reaped, doesn't that uh, disturb you to a degree that, Lord, please, all that the enemy wants to do is throw you off so you won't know what God is doing and how he's leading. That's all he wants to do, and he's satisfied. If he can never get you off, then everything else you do after that would likely be off. Well, then I'm going to tell you something. You might think you're doing all right with just good guesses and doing what comes naturally, but you won't end up all right. All right, then, if you're satisfied, if you're satisfied. But remember, you had an opportunity to get lined up tonight. Brother, I'm already off. Well, get back on. They want it especially in your speech. You need to be led when to speak and when not to speak. They want that's so important. By your words, you're going to be justified. By your words, you're going to be condemned. They want all the people have to do is just, just accuse you falsely or, or say something that they, you don't feel quite right and you can't stop your mouth. You just got to answer again. They want to let you know that's not God. Don't you know that messes up your experience? Well, may God help. I think that you had a grand opportunity tonight to get lined up with a step-by-step -step leadership of the Holy Ghost. You know what they want? Even there are those of us who got our lives in messes and in balls. Even if you seek mercy and seek God, He could guide you from here and guide you right out of it. If you would allow him to. God could lead you right out of some of these messes that you're in. We got a lot of good people are in messes tonight because they don't know what God is saying. Good people wouldn't do a thing wrong, but they just didn't follow the Holy Ghost. God could lead us right out if we would allow him. We humble ourselves and say, Lord, I admit that I have not fully acknowledged you in all my ways. I have not done it. But hereafter, if you just help me from here, if you just lead me out of it, if you just give me some guidance, shine a little light on my path from here, and I'll follow. God will be merciful. I feel God will be merciful unto you and lead you out. All right then, dear one, if you're satisfied, if indeed you are, if you're, satisfied, if you're convinced you're on the right track, even now, I'm persuaded many are not, but if you're satisfied, We'll have to let it go with that. Are there any belated announcements? Yes, sir. Anyone in particular? You'd like to see who? Anyone in particular? You almost have to designate.
Well, I don't, I'm not sure. What you got for you, man? Well, all right. There's some who's not working tomorrow. You mean? Yeah, just the ones who not working. Tomorrow? Yeah. Or some who'll be free tomorrow. Then meet brother for some who are not working tomorrow. All right then. We have much to pray about, dear ones. And you better pray and better pray hard. If there are no belated announcements. Get you some rest tonight, will you? Get yourself lined up. Oh, my dear sisters, ladies, and sisters.